When asking the question, what does the next evolution of oil and gas look like? You have to ask yourself, what does the next evolution of economics and forecasting look like? So we sat down with my good buddy, Armand Prades, with Inside Petroleum to dive in. This is Armand Paradis, and I see you on founder of Inside Petroleum. I think we're in a position where we, we have a lot of startups coming here you know, every single week, and we've been fortunate enough to see a lot of different technologies. And whenever you and Jeremy walked in our office, uh, I guess it was probably sometime last year, and I was like, well, can I see it? Can I see Inside Petroleum? Because we had met three something years ago, and I was like, what are you working on? And you're like, I can't tell you. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll see where this conversation goes. But then you showed it to me, and I was like, wow. The one thing that's been consistent is that you know people are not satisfied with the traditional way that you're doing forecasting uh, and re reserves estimations uh, and economics through Aries, PhD, Win, and a lot of the other incumbents in this space. And so I think that you know not just blowing smoke up you know your butt, but you guys are, are poised to really kind of lead this next evolution of the way that forecasting and economics are uh, generated in this next evolution of oil and gas. Yep. Yeah, Jacob. So this past year when we released the product um, back in May, you know, we past eight or nine months, we spoke to over 300 companies. So it just helped us significantly see the vision, like where the space is going. And uh, so especially after talking to so many engineers and the finance folks. So the, the cool thing is industry is so receptive of the technologies, they want more and more. They want actually want significantly more than what you deliver. You know, yeah. so we can never keep up with the uh, capabilities that people are asking. They're asking for more automation, uh, removing a lot of manual, tedious jumping from here to here. Everyone wants to make decisions. You yeah. know, they don't want to come here and just clean up stuff. And let me let me go ahead and copy from here to here. Everybody is just constantly asking for more, more, more capabilities. And one thing that uh, a lot of those old technologies haven't been kept up with, the, with the today's demand. So that's why we came into the market and, uh, and, and to be quite honest, we never expected to, to see this much great traction from the people. And, uh, but you know, the nature of the business that we are running is so complicated. It's a very, very complex, a complex process. Like I've been in industry for close to like 10, 15 years now. And that's where I, that gray hair comes from. Yeah, a lot of gray <laughs> hair is coming from. But believe me, I, even me, there are a lot of aspects of the business that I still don't know. You know, I, and I guarantee there's not one person here says, oh, I, I know the entire uh, cycle of just going how to run an EMP by myself. It's just impossible because it's very complicated. This means that uh, this is not something that it can it cannot be replaced by a machine by no no way it's just impossible. And uh, at the end of the day, if you make your tools more and more sophisticated, more capabilities, there are so many different ways to get to different answers or even same answers. That's why the judgment always comes to play, experience comes to play, and uh, so it, this this has been the basically the feedback that we are receiving. Like people want. People want more automation. People not scared of automation. They're not scared of technology. A lot of generation, a lot of people who are running the business is pretty much in our age. You know, so mm -hmm. these guys are used to seeing uh, apps on their cell phone, uh, a lot of cool visuals and stuff like that. They they're tired of open up a tool that is just you know, so, so so basic and archaic. You know, they want more and more. You went to the 300 different companies in the space, and what were some of the few things that they came back saying, These are, this is what we need to see in a tool that we want to use? So yeah, so basically everyone wants a nice, clean, integrated workflow, correct? So that makes sense to them. And you guys have a beautiful UI UX. Like, yeah. So the, the way that it looks, I was like, this is unbelievable. And then a little animated dog. Yeah. I think, you, didn't you guys name yeah, it? Yeah, Combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Combo, yeah. yeah, so in the comp, yeah, that, I thought that was like really, really neat. Yeah, for sure, yeah, people, again, people love cool stuff. They don't, they don't want to see like something like old and, like if, the, the, the tool that you're using you, is a part of your life, correct? So you just, you have to make it fun and exciting. Again, the, the general response is they people want to have an integrated nice workflow. It's not the job of engineers to manage data. Yeah. The data has to come in nice and clean and piped in, and they, they are there to make that judgment call 
I mean, in, in terms of making decisions. You know, it, it's not their job to clean data in Excel. Let me map this, do V look up here and there. Like, it's not, literally not their job. So we have to make that process of, like, running tax, you know, like, t taxes in TurboTax. You don't have to be accountant to, to, to do your taxes right now. So this is our vision. Yeah. So we want to make running your company in a way that you don't have to be an accountant or an expert level uh, person to be able to run it. Anybody who can log in and understand how the process works, we have to give them the tool to get them to the answer much faster and much more robust and take all that uh, data manipulation, let me take it from this tool to this tool, let me change the format, why it didn't come in, Any of, we have to remove all those. You know, we have to take people from raw data to the answers much faster and give them all the scenarios that can happen in the future because life is, everything's complicated. The work that we're doing is so complicated, it's impossible to predict the future with one, one answer. So you have to give them a spectrum of the answers and let them to make the right decisions. So you can do P90, P50, P20 absolutely. and run these infinite simulations. Infinite simulation in terms of the forecasting, in terms of economics, in terms of uh, capex and the prices, there's uncertainty everywhere, right? So the only way that you can solve this is not by running stuff in Excel. It's just impossible. You know, you need to use the power of cloud. You need to be able to run thousands of different scenarios with the, with the click of a button, you know, and reconcile uh, what happened last year to this year quickly, correct? For, like, for example, one of the great examples of the, the process that we significantly made it easier and, and people loved it so much, it was just the whole process of reconciling. What happened previous quarter to this quarter? What are the changes? Mm -hmm. I mean, it might seem simple, but this is something that people spend weeks. And uh, so uh, when we presented something to them that they can convert that weeks to literally minutes, it's just mind blowing. You know, yeah. you just, and when we see those reactions, it just gives us a lot of energy. And, um, but you know, our, like, like going back to what we mentioned, like that, that never stopped. We came to a conclusion that there is not a point that people said this is enough, enough right. feature. I, they always want, want you to make your platform more and more powerful, mm -hmm. add this specific capabilities, make it more modern and more robust every day. You know, like iPhone, you know, like yeah. right now there are 12 versions of iPhone. You know, who, who thought at iPhone 6 there's gonna be iPhone 7, 8, 12, and who knows, maybe in five years, from now you might have iPhone 50, you know, so they expect the same thing. You know, like, think about Aries hasn't changed 40 years, you know, we have Aries 1 and 2, you know, that's it, like, it's not the same. <laughs> every, every day they're asking for more and more and capabilities, more automation, more integrated workflow, which is super awesome. I mean, this is what we want, you know, so as a technology company, that's what we want, and uh, we want to double down on the uh, development and giving people even more, you know, so every day. Uh, you know, you had a lot of success in 2020 when a lot of people, you know, have struggled. Obviously, double black swan event. Um, where are you guys? Where are you guys at as a company now? That's actually very interesting. If I going back to roughly eight or nine months ago, when we were like eight or nine people, it was just the day that the the COVID happened and the negative oil prices, it was just crazy, man. Like it's just, the entire industry was like, wow, like what's gonna happen, you know? So we figure we don't have any option, just we have to just work harder. So yeah. what we did, uh, like we said, like like I mentioned, we mentioned, we, we spoke to hundreds of companies. Every, every week we have like 40 or 50 meetings. And uh, so at the time that Everybody was scared and uh, they just hunkered down. Like we, we just work more, work harder, deliver more, talk to more people. And uh, so we grew from uh, nine to 25 right now. So, and uh, 16 people hired for a company our size was, was crazy. So we were expecting to have 10 potential clients 2020 and call it amazing. We ended up, we finished there with 50 solid companies. And uh, this, uh, this whole, uh, from, 2021, we had brought additional 10, 12 companies just in the past month or so. So we are in a great shape, so we are expanding. Uh, so we, we plan to, again, double down on dev side and, uh, and, uh, and the and product management and the customer success. Uh, and we figure uh, even doubling the dev team might not be enough because there's so much capabilities. There are so many 
uh, pieces of the workflow needs to be fixed, and, and those pieces are so complex yeah. that by itself it can be a, literally a separate group and company just focus on that piece. You know, so uh, where we are, we're in a great, great shape, expanding. Hopefully this year we can double again uh, in terms of the number of clients and in terms of the employees that we hire. I think one of the main keys to your success, I mean, it's something that you keep touching on, is that you keep going to the market, you're going to your customers, and you're asking them really not, like a lot of people will build something and then try to sell it, right? Yeah. And then you guys are coming to the market and asking us what needs to be built, what problems need to be solved. And I feel like you're looking at it comprehensively from the workflow as opposed to just siloed features. Absolutely. So that's one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of other technology company has made. They have a vision about what they want to do, but that vision is only their vision, you know? You, you have to talk to your potential users. They, you need to know what they want because those are the people who are important. Those are the people who are gonna adopt your technology. So we don't see anybody as, as actual client. We see them as partner, correct? So before we do anything, we sit down and talk to you. Uh, before we sell you anything, we just sit down and talk, get your feedback, try to implement your feedback as soon as possible. If, uh, and if there are features or anything that we cannot develop in the time period, we, we will communicate. And uh, we, basically, we will try to find a way to, to work with your workflow as well. Make, make the software a little bit, add this button here, just make it with your own workflow, because everyone uh, has some unique ways of doing stuff. But in general, we, 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 we saw that 70, 80% of the problem that exists in the industry is common, like, that, which is a very good thing to, to see. Like, it, everyone is dealing with the same challenges. And uh, so uh, solving those problems with everyone is just uh, one by one. So again, we see everyone as a partner. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't see them as client. And uh, so basically, we take care of you, you take care of us, and that's how it works. You know? yeah. So that's why we have a lot of success. And, uh, and the best customer service, you know, so our like one of the role models for any technology company, I think it should be Amazon, right? They have yeah. the best customer service and that, that is the key. That is the key. So like our response time being less than five minutes. I don't know if anybody can beat that, you know? Yeah. So, so that's, that's another it's, key reason. It's been really awesome and exciting to get to know you, Jeremy, and, and the rest of the team and to see all the success that you guys have had over the years. Because I know you've put in you know, before any of this was public facing, there was just years of work that went into it. And that was built on, you know, the 10 years prior that you spent in oil and gas in your career. Um, and then same thing with Jeremy. So I know for a fact that you guys are going to continue to crush it. I know it's not going to be the last time that anybody sees you. Um, so thanks again for being here. 100%. Really, really appreciate you guys that uh, basically bringing this concept like the podcasting wasn't even existed in the whole and gas <laughs> like everybody was so scared of like being on top of the like the technology like people like like they, they even talk about i think thought about podcasting you guys brought it to the energy space which is pretty cool uh, and uh, yeah really appreciate you guys and uh, inviting technology companies companies like us bringing in, in in front of people who are interested to see you know really really appreciate yeah